Why should I have to give anything to that child? I think giving a Christmas gift to a stepchild with no blood relation is just a waste of money. Every Christmas, when I bring the children to visit my in-laws, my mother-in-law clearly treats my daughter differently. She distinguishes her from the others in a separate way. I can't believe you would say something so terrible. But that's the reality. Since she doesn't share Jack's blood, she's completely a stranger to us. Hearing this, my daughter burst into tears and ran up the stairs. Seeing her like this, my mother-in-law smiled contentedly and continued chatting happily with the relatives. My anger grew as my mother-in-law coldly dismissed my daughter who is not related by blood. It was unbearable to see her openly discriminate between my son who has a blood relationship and my daughter who is not, and causing her pain. Since you are also a stranger, Kate, why don't you both just leave? I have no intention of giving you a dime. That's fine. As I felt the cold gaze of my mother-in-law, I quietly followed my daughter. I softly spoke to her as she cried burying her face in the corner of the hallway on the second floor. My name is Kate, and I am 37 years old. Seven years ago, when I was 30, I suddenly lost my husband to illness. When he was diagnosed, he had only a short time left, and neither my newborn daughter nor I had time to prepare ourselves before sending him off to heaven. Since then, I have been feeling the loneliness of not having him around, trying to live happily with my daughter. For years passed, and while working as a head nurse, I met Jack, who would later become my husband, through a business partnership involving medical devices. He was extremely polite, kind, and had an inner strength. He was very considerate of me, and gradually, I was drawn to his warmth. Still, my most important person is my daughter Anne. Despite my feelings for Jack, he promised to care for her as his own child, and seeing her begin to open up to him, I decided to remarry. The marriage proposal went smoothly with my parents, but it was not easy to gain his mother's approval, and she strongly opposed the marriage. Remarrying an older woman with a stepchild will not end well. You must be after his money. I will never allow such a marriage. I'm not considering marriage for financial reasons. I'm attracted to his profound kindness and hidden mental strength. I sincerely wish to walk into the future with him. People can say anything they want with words. Weren't you also extorting alimony from your previous husband? My previous husband passed away from illness, making that completely impossible. Such circumstances are of no concern to me. No matter what we tried, we could not gain the mother-in-law's approval, and our words seemed to be completely ignored. Ultimately, we were unable to overcome her objections, and we reluctantly had to leave the in-law's home. Kate, I truly feel sorry for making you suffer so much because of my mother's words. Don't worry. No matter how harsh the words thrown at us, I wholeheartedly desire to marry you, and my resolve will not change. Thank you so much. No matter how much my mother opposes, I promise to protect Kate and Anne's safety. Protecting you and Anne is my top priority. Although it's saddening not to have my mother-in-law's approval, with my husband's steadfast support, we decided to proceed with our marriage. Our daughter actively plays various roles within our household and has developed a deep bond with my husband, akin to that of a biological parent and child. Seeing this warm relationship is very reassuring, and I continue to work full-time even after our marriage. Later, I became pregnant, took maternity leave at the appropriate time, and safely delivered a boy. Our daughter, having given much thought, named him Henry. With his birth, our home became even livelier and our days richer, but it also increased my mother-in-law's interference. Kate, you are raising Henry properly, aren't you? Yes, with significant support from my husband Jake, we're doing our best. Henry is the eldest son of the family. 
It is demanded that you raise him properly. You shouldn't rely solely on Jake, but must fulfill your role as a mother yourself. You're right, I'll try harder. My mother-in-law brightly spoke to Henry, her face overflowing with joy. Henry, let's play with the new toy I bought. Let's have a fun time together. A toy. Despite being busy with work, my mother-in-law regularly visits us on weekends and actively plays with Henry. She generously buys toys and picture books for him, for which I am thankful. However, every time she visits, my shy, introverted daughter retreats to her room, reluctant to come out. I hope that one day my daughter will accept my mother-in-law as family and open her heart to her, all while respecting my daughter's pace. Time passed, and my daughter's attitude towards my mother-in-law remained unchanged. Then, one holiday three years later, while I was busy with household chores, an unexpected call came from my mother-in-law. Kate, do you have a moment? Yes, what is it? Could you possibly double the amount of money you send us this month? Christmas is approaching, and I'd like to spend it a bit more lavishly. Henry would surely enjoy a grand celebration, wouldn't he? Doubling the allowance? We already send a significant amount each month, so I need some time to think about your proposal. I'd like to discuss it thoroughly with my husband. So, you don't mind if I suffer through embarrassment in front of the relatives? You just plan to sit by silently while I'm ashamed? To think I have such an uncaring daughter-in-law. I didn't mean it in that way. I'm sorry if my words led to misunderstandings. Originally, my husband was sending relatively small amounts of money to his mother, which I continued. However, once she learned I was a nurse, my mother-in-law began demanding higher amounts. What started as well-meaning support gradually shifted, and after she quit her job, our remittances became her sole means of livelihood. When asked to double the remittance amount, it felt quite unreasonable. While Christmas is indeed near, it's difficult to meet such a sudden request for a large amount of money. We need to discuss this thoroughly with my husband, so could you please wait a little longer? You are truly an incompetent daughter-in-law. I pity Jack for marrying such a woman. You should just quietly give me money instead of making me look bad. What do you find enjoyable about humiliating me? I didn't intend that. Understood. I will send double the usual amount as before. If you had said that from the beginning, we could have saved both of our time. I don't want any unnecessary comments. After hanging up the phone, I was tormented by doubts about whether my decision was correct. That evening, while playing with my husband and children, I casually brought up my mother-in-law's request and decided to consult with my husband. Your mom asked to double the allowance for Christmas, and I just agreed. Was that really okay? Don't worry about it. I'll talk to my mother. She clearly relies too much on us, so she needs to be patient a bit. Thanks, really. My husband quickly contacted my mother-in-law. She seemed surprised by the call and began speaking in a somewhat panicked tone. Actually, this money is necessary for Christmas preparations. I think a proper budget is essential for us to properly host our family. Funds are indeed important, but you should consult with me more. Since Kate is sending the allowance out of goodwill, it would be nice if you showed some gratitude. Yes, understood. But I'm very busy right now, so let's end this conversation here. Please transfer the funds as soon as possible, today or tomorrow. Saying that my mother-in-law hurriedly ended the conversation, and my husband was cut off before he could say anything else. Honestly, paying double the usual amount to my mother-in-law was both a financial and emotional burden. Still, with Christmas approaching, I accepted the situation as temporary and reluctantly made the transfer. On Christmas Day, we drove to my in-law's house. 
As if timing our arrival, my mother-in-law came out bustling with energy and rushed towards the car. Jack, thank you for driving so long. I have prepared some warm tea inside, please come in and relax. Henry, I have a special large gift waiting for you. Thank you for all your help this year. As a token of our gratitude, we brought a gift, so please enjoy it. Hi, Grandma. Right. I want to spend time with Henry, so you others please help out in the kitchen. Only my husband and son were warmly welcomed, and my mother-in-law was openly cold to my daughter and me. I was bewildered by such clear discrimination but just wanted to get inside to escape the cold and warm up. However, the moment I started to take off our coats, my mother-in-law scolded us in a very strict tone. Wait a minute. Bringing dirt from outside into the house is unacceptable. What will you do if Henry catches a cold because of this? Once you've taken off your coat, start cooking for the relatives immediately. I want at least 10 dishes prepared. If we're short on ingredients, go out and buy what we need. So I'm to cook and shop? However, I don't recall receiving such instructions over the phone. You should have realized that on your own. A daughter-in-law with a divorce history is really troublesome. And, you're already a big elementary school student. You can at least help with the cooking, can't you? If you're found useless, you won't belong here. Faced with my mother-in-law's unreasonable demands, I sighed deeply inside but resolved to manage somehow and began preparations. Fortunately, my husband, sensing my distress, offered to help, and thanks to him, the preparations went smoother than expected. However, we were almost out of the necessary ingredients, so I had to go out and shop. Despite having doubled the remittances, my mother-in-law showed no intention of covering the shopping expenses, which frustrated me as I headed to the market to buy what we needed and then returned home. Upon returning, I found that relatives from my father-in-law's side had already gathered at the in-law's house, and the place was buzzing early on. Look at that. It's rare to see a man working in the kitchen. Come, join us for a drink. Yes, please wait a moment. That's right, Jack. Just relax here. Kate will take care of the cooking, so no worries. Initially, my husband resisted leaving the kitchen but eventually was persuaded by the male relative and my mother-in-law to head to the living room. Thankfully, due to my husband's help, most of the preparation was already complete, so I believed I could manage the remaining tasks with my daughter and return to the kitchen while reassuring my husband not to worry. As I continued with the rest of the cooking and cleanup, I could hear the jovial laughter of the relatives and the clinking of glasses from the living room, which was filled with a cheerful atmosphere. When Anne and I hurriedly entered the living room, it seemed as though there was no place set for us, as the glasses and dishes that had been prepared were pushed to the side. We reluctantly sat at the edge of the living room, and at that moment, my mother-in-law cheerfully addressed us. Considering you might need to get refills, it's easier to move from the edge, so I set it up there. I see, understood. Henry is loved by everyone here, truly a popular child. Kate, you're not really needed here so just take it easy in that corner. If there's any problem, Jack will handle it. In this situation, all the relatives were focused on Henry, while and received hardly any attention. No one spoke to her, and she felt isolated and lonely, looking downcast. I had sensed that we might be excluded, but seeing and being ignored just the same filled me with indignation. Henry, here's your long-awaited Christmas gift. Grandma, thank you so much. You're welcome, I spare no expense for my adorable grandson. Afterward, as I watched my mother-in-law hand the Christmas money to Henry, I saw several other relatives begin to give him money. I approached to prompt my son to express his gratitude, but Anne remained still, looking sad as no such consideration was shown to her by the adults, 
who treated her as if she were invisible, and I felt great disappointment and anger at the situation. Mom, thank you for the Christmas gift for Henry. But why didn't and get anything? Why should I give her anything? She's just a stepchild with no blood relation to us. Giving her a Christmas gift would just be a waste of money. How can you say something so cruel? I'm just stating the facts. Since she doesn't share Jack's blood, she is essentially a stranger to us. After hearing my mother-in-law's heartless words, my daughter rushed up the stairs crying. Watching this, my mother-in-law smirked and continued to chat with other relatives. I felt such strong anger at her for openly discriminating against my daughter, who is a stepchild, and tormenting her like this, that I reached my breaking point. Kate, you're ultimately a stranger too. Why don't you both just leave? I won't give you a penny to stay here. Understood. After facing my mother-in-law sternly, I hurried upstairs to my crying daughter. I found her crouched in a corner of the hallway and gently spoke to her. Let's go home, Anne. Let's celebrate Christmas again, just the four of us, you, me, dad, and Henry. Okay, mom. I comforted my daughter by holding her shoulder, then quickly gathered our things and headed to the front door. There, my husband and Henry were already waiting, ready to leave. Jake, wait a second. It's unacceptable for you not to be here for Christmas. Not giving a gift was just a joke. Mom, you were clear earlier about it being a waste of money. Please consider Anne's feelings and refrain from such jokes. Yes, but it wasn't really like that. Enough, let go of me. We're leaving now. As my husband forcefully shook off my mother-in-law's hand, we hurried to the car. While the house was still filled with lively voices, we decided to head home quietly. Upon arriving, the stress of the day and my anger at my mother-in-law and the other relatives' inappropriate actions overwhelmed me. But I focused on comforting my daughter. By keeping the conversation light and enjoyable, we eventually fell asleep without realizing it. The next morning, we woke up much later than usual, having missed many calls and messages overnight because our phones were on silent mode. Tentatively, I began to check the messages. While my husband received relatively gentle messages from my mother-in-law, like a come back home. If I made you feel bad, I'm truly sorry. I found messages for myself like, you and your stepchild completely ruined our Christmas. Kate, it's pointless to let them distract us anymore. Any reaction from us will only worsen the situation, so let's just ignore them. Yes, you're right. Despite continued calls and emails from my mother-in-law, Jake and I discussed it and decided to ignore all of them. Initially, the messages were accusatory, but gradually became more plaintive, like, please come back. If I made a mistake, I ask for your forgiveness. However, we remained undisturbed by them and consistently ignored all contact. Eventually, communication from my mother-in-law ceased. But the peace was short-lived. Two months later, my mother-in-law showed up at our doorstep, hobbling on crutches. There's been no money sent for the past two months. What's that about? You caused trouble during Christmas, isn't it normal to come and apologize and give money? You really are a disgraceful daughter-in-law. Mom, please calm down. I don't want you making a scene in front of the children. That doesn't matter to me. Look at this crutch. Have you even thought about why I ended up like this? Despite my husband trying to calm her, my mother-in-law exploded in anger. I've been coughing non-stop since Christmas, and I ended up going to the hospital. Unfortunately, I fell and broke a bone. On top of that, I bumped into a hospital machine and now I'm being charged for damages in addition to my medical bills. 
Without the money from you, I can't pay these bills. That has nothing to do with us. It's your fault I got like this because of the germs you brought in, so you should take responsibility. My mother-in-law was unyielding in her blame, pinning everything from the Christmas incident to the broken bone and even the damage charges on us. Mom, it's unfortunate that you fell and got hurt, but you didn't need to come here using a crutch. I had to come in person since you never answered my calls. I've run out of savings, and I'm really struggling to figure out how to get by. What happened to all the money we've sent you before? We've been sending more than enough to ensure you aren't in financial trouble. About that. That money's all gone. How could that possibly be? You see, I've always been perceived by those around me as living a lavish lifestyle. So I kept buying expensive items, thinking the money from you would keep coming, and I used up my savings too. Now, if new money doesn't come in, I'm terrified of being laughed at by the neighbors. That's your own misconception. No matter what the neighbors say, that's your problem, not ours. Our financial support was not meant to uphold your pride. That's not the issue. Actually, I plan to distribute hand-me-down luxury brands to the neighbors. Without your money, that plan falls through. How can you make me suffer such embarrassment? Our financial support was always a gesture of goodwill. It has nothing to do with what the neighbors or other relatives think, or even your own pride. What an impossible daughter-in-law. Jake, you understand, right? You can't just abandon your own mother in her time of need, can you? My mother-in-law tried to manipulate my husband with her demanding attitude, hoping to extract support from him. However, my husband decided to respond with harsh words to her. It's unforgivable to ignore your granddaughter and only act like a mother when it suits you. Don't say such horrible things. I'm just really struggling financially. Your financial troubles are also a result of your own actions. Given your obsession with money, continuing to send you money is nothing but a waste. So, please leave our house right now. Startled by my husband's angry shout, my mother-in-law sat down trembling and clearly flustered. Without any sympathy, my husband drove her out of our house, and she left in humiliation. Although my mother-in-law recovered from her fracture, she was financially devastated by high medical costs and damage claims. Moreover, due to her age, she struggled to find suitable work and move around easily. Denied financial help from relatives, she was burdened with significant debt while trying to make ends meet through part-time jobs. Meanwhile, our family found strength in the deep love my husband had for my daughter despite the lack of blood relation. Freed from those who had discriminated against and caused sadness, our family of four renewed our commitment to watching over the growth and happiness of our children and living together more unitedly than ever. Linda. Can you hear me? Linda. I could hear my husband Tom calling my name from a distance. Where is this place? What happened to me? We're at the hospital. Don't worry about anything anymore, just rest easy. As Tom said this, he warmly held my hand, trying to reassure me. You were already back? How's work going? Tom had been on a solo work assignment for a while. Now's not the time to talk about that. We need to think about your health first. Tom spoke to me in a soothing tone, his face a complex mix of sadness and anger. Actually, when I got home, I found you collapsed on the floor, so I called an ambulance right away. As Tom spoke, my lost memories gradually began to return. Yes, I had been lying down at home due to illness. I'm really sorry. If only I could have been by your side sooner. Then Tom started to describe everything that happened from the time he found me collapsed. He had been busy with work for a long time and had tried to contact me, 
but became anxious when he couldn't reach me. I had a bad feeling about it. That's why I decided to come back to the country urgently. When I rushed home, I saw our grandson James weeding the garden. It was a sight I hadn't seen before, and I praised him, but... At that moment, a darker shadow fell over Tom's face. I thought I'd help a little, so when I started putting the weeds James had gathered into a trash bag, he suddenly said something. Please don't throw that away. Mom asked for it especially for Grandma. James would say something like that. At those words, I was hit with a wave of deep surprise and shock, leaving me unable to continue speaking. Even though I told him to stop, James kept on gathering the weeds single-mindedly. I want to help Grandma, whom I love the most. He said that. It's unforgivable for such a pure child to feel such a heavy responsibility. At that moment, Tom's clenched fist trembled, and his eyes brimmed with pain and sadness. My name is Linda. I am 53 years old, a homemaker. Since our son Ryan started his job, he has moved out, and I live quietly with my husband Tom. Although we don't see our son often, he makes sure to contact us every week. Thanks to his calls, we don't feel lonely, and hearing his voice always brings us comfort. After a few years of working, Ryan visited home with a woman of his age standing beside him. My name is Lisa. I am in a relationship with Ryan. She greeted us very politely, and seeing her warm and modest smile, I sincerely thanked her for meeting someone my son could truly respect. A year later, Ryan and Lisa got married. Afterwards, Ryan moved out of his old apartment and they moved together into a new condo right across from our house. Lisa was not very talkative at first. Whether she was shy or had been taught by her parents not to speak out of turn, the reason wasn't clear. However, whenever they came to visit us, Lisa would serve tea and help with the meals, though she seldom started conversations herself. Lisa, you are now an important part of our family, so please don't hesitate to say anything you want. There's no need to be so formal. Thank you, Linda. That means a lot to me. I never had a daughter, so I was delighted that a gentle and graceful woman like Lisa came into our home as my son's wife. You might actually find this quite funny. Yes, the story is really interesting. I might laugh so hard my stomach hurts. But this story might be a bit difficult for men to hear. Then, let's keep this story just between us women. By me starting conversations actively, Lisa gradually began to open up. The following year, she safely gave birth to James, our first grandchild, bringing new life into our home. It's not fair that only Linda gets to see James all the time. If I wasn't working, I could see my grandson whenever I wanted, I'm a bit jealous. I could see that Tom was occasionally jealous of me, and he would grumble. Linda gets to see James anytime, which makes me jealous. To reassure him, I said, Don't worry, I'll love James plenty for both of us. Okay, I understand. Then, as a grandfather, I won't complain and will keep working hard for my grandson. Saying this, Tom gave a wry smile as he got ready for work and headed out. After quickly finishing the routine housework, I looked forward to visiting the condo where my son and his wife lived every day. Lisa, are you okay? Is there anything troubling you or something I can help with? No, Linda, you're always so considerate and I truly appreciate it. Lisa's parents lived quite far away, and since they seldom spoke over the phone, I hope to alleviate some of the mental and physical burdens Lisa faced alone. As Lisa was busy with childcare and household duties, I wanted to offer whatever support I could without reservation. As years passed and James began attending kindergarten, I found myself missing his presence during the day and felt a bit lonely. 
Thinking it might be nice to spend some time together, I considered having tea and chatting with Lisa, so I took some tea snacks a friend had given me and headed to my son's condo. However, when I arrived at the condo and pressed the intercom, there was no response from Lisa, and it was clear that no one was home. It seemed Lisa had gone out again. Recently, Lisa has been leaving the house quite often. Since James is at kindergarten during the day, it doesn't inconvenience anyone, but being alone in the quiet house can still feel lonely. That day, while Lisa was out, I decided to go back home and finish some planned shopping. In the afternoon, I heard James's cheerful singing outside, so I opened the window to look out. Just then, I saw James entering the condo hand in hand with Lisa. Perfect timing. Maybe I'll give James some of the snacks I brought. Thinking this, I took the tea snacks I had brought and headed back to the condo across the street. At that moment, Lisa hurried out of the entrance hall and we crossed paths as she left. Linda, I'm really sorry. Something urgent has come up. Before I could say anything, Lisa hurried off somewhere. James, where did your mom go? I don't know where mom went either. I was worried that Lisa's parents might be having trouble. But I scolded myself for jumping to negative conclusions and took a deep breath. As the sun was setting, Lisa finally came back home. Linda, sorry to keep you waiting. Did something happen? Seeing Lisa return as if nothing had happened, I let out a sigh of relief. There's no trouble at all. I was just really worried because you rushed out so suddenly, I thought something serious might have happened. Actually, an old friend from my student days suddenly got in touch, and I had to meet them. I'm really sorry. There's absolutely no problem with that. I was just worrying needlessly, so there's no need for you to apologize. I laughed off my unnecessary concerns. Recently, Lisa has been finding reasons to go out almost daily, and James's time alone at home has increased. Lisa, have you started some part-time job or maybe a hobby activity? While comforting myself with these thoughts, I naturally began to visit my son's apartment less frequently. During this time, my husband, Tom, also started a solo work assignment, which wasn't surprising as it has occasionally happened since our marriage. However, when James comes home from school, he always calls me. Grandma, mom went out again and I feel lonely. Can you come over to play? He would invite me over, so I rarely felt lonely. Sometime later, my son, Ryan, had to go on a long business trip due to work commitments. Mom, I won't be able to come home for a while, so please take good care of Lisa and James for me. Ryan has always been serious and responsible. Don't worry at all. I'll keep a close eye on both James and Lisa, so go on your trip with peace of mind. With that, I saw Ryan off with a smile. So, don't worry, Lisa. Ryan will be away for a while, but please feel at ease. If you have any troubles, please don't hesitate to consult me. As I encouraged her, Lisa showed a soft smile mixed with a wry one. You don't need to go to such lengths. I won't have much time to spend with you anyway, so such kindness is not necessary. Are you busy with work? If that's the case, I wish you would have told me earlier. Work-related? Yes, that's right, indeed it is. Lisa said, laughing lightly, giving a meaningful answer that hinted at something else. However, I didn't take her words too seriously. Months passed, and my health gradually worsened, leading to more bedridden days. According to the doctor I saw, it was diagnosed as a seasonal cold. If you rest well at home, you should recover quickly. The doctor said this and prescribed some cold medicine. He predicted a relatively quick recovery, but due to my age, it was taking longer than expected. Wishing that someone from my family was by my side, 
I tried to call my son and his wife, grasping at straws. After dozens of rings. It seems no one is picking up. I thought, just as I was about to give up. Linda, do you need help with something? Lisa's slightly irritated voice came through the phone. Lisa? If you're busy, it's okay. I'm sorry for taking your time. In my groggy state, I thought I shouldn't cause unnecessary worry for Lisa. When you say it like that, I become more concerned. Please tell me what's going on, don't hesitate. Lisa spoke with a somewhat stern tone. Actually, I've caught a bit of a cold. But if you're busy, don't worry about me. You caught a cold? Okay, I'll take care of you. Are you sure? You seem busy with your part-time job as well. You were the one who asked for help, weren't you? Lisa replied with a bit of anger in her words. Her words were right, and I realized it was unfair to ask for help and then tell her not to worry. I'll do whatever I can, so please rest assured. Thank you, Lisa. Just having you by my side makes me feel much stronger. About 30 minutes later, Lisa arrived with some groceries and nutritious drinks I needed. I feel so bad for having you look after me like this, especially since you have your own work to do. Don't worry about it. When I heard you were feeling unwell, I didn't hesitate to come. That's my role as your daughter-in-law. Let's start by making some soup, shall we? Lisa went to the kitchen and I felt a deep sense of gratitude as I ate the soup she made. I'll step out for a little while. I'll be right back, so wait here, okay? Lisa left those words behind and quickly left the house. She returned about two or three hours later, carrying a strong scent of perfume, which made me feel a bit nauseous. Perhaps my sense of smell had become unusually sensitive because I was sick, so I didn't mention it to Lisa. Days passed, but instead of improving, my condition worsened daily with stomach pains and nausea. Linda, I thought you might be tired of the same soup every day, so I tried making something a little different. Why don't you try this? Lisa brought me a bowl of soup that was an unusually bright green color. She gently propped me up in bed and carefully scooped up the soup with a spoon, bringing it to my mouth. However, I sensed an unusual grassy smell from the soup that made my stomach react. I'm sorry, Lisa, but I really appreciate it. I just don't have any appetite right now. Let's wait a little before I try eating. I said this and lay back down. But immediately after, Lisa suddenly pulled off the blanket I was using. Don't say that, just eat properly. You need to take in nutrition to get better. As she said this, she lifted me up again and forcefully spooned the soup into my mouth. That's hot. I exclaimed sharply. My mouth was suddenly filled with an unexpected heat. I grimaced in pain as an indescribable bitterness and a grassy, raw smell pierced through my nostrils. At the same time, something rapidly surged up from my stomach. I couldn't help but spit it out. That's really disgusting. Seeing what I had spat out, Lisa clearly showed her disgust, pinching her nose and frowning. I'm terribly sorry, Lisa. I apologized deeply, filled with embarrassment. I can't take this anymore. She expressed her irritation with her hands on her head. Clean this up quickly. I don't want to see such filth. Lisa. I was surprised and confused by her attitude. It was completely different from her usual calm and graceful demeanor. Hurry up and wipe it. I can't stand this awful smell any longer. It's making me feel sick too. Her tone and demeanor were as if she were a different person than just moments before. Once you've cleaned that up, eat all of this soup. When you're done, wash the dishes yourself. After saying that, 
Lisa quickly left the house. My carelessness had angered her. I deeply blamed myself for making her leave, perhaps never to return, because I had carelessly vomited the soup she made. The next day, Lisa returned to our house, but she looked completely different from the day before. Lisa? Why do you look like this? And your clothes? I was shocked by her flashy clothes and heavy makeup, and lost for words. That's none of your business. Lisa responded curtly, paying no attention to my further inquiries. And just like the previous day, she brought the unpleasant smelling soup and forced it into my mouth when I resisted. Come on, eat it all up. As she said, she forcefully spooned the soup into my mouth. Reacting to the horrible taste and smell, I spit it out again, and Lisa. Not this again clicked her tongue in disgust and opened the window wide. The cold air rushed in, which was harsh on my already weakened body. The stink here is because of you. I'll leave this open as your punishment today. She said harshly and left the room. As this situation continued for days, my condition worsened instead of improving. I suffered immense stress physically and mentally, even beginning to lose my hair. If this continued, it might even endanger my life. Filled with tension and desperation, I started searching for my smartphone to call my son, Ryan, or my husband, Tom, or anyone who could help me escape this plight. But the smartphone that was usually right beside my pillow could not be found anywhere. Perhaps Lisa had taken it somewhere out of my reach or intentionally hidden it. With no way to contact the outside world, and unable to gather enough strength even to speak. I couldn't ask for help from the neighbors, go to the bathroom, or even stand up on my own. Knowing my dire situation, Lisa remained indifferent and did not offer a helping hand. Instead, she ignored my suffering and continued with her actions. Reflecting on her behavior, I realized that if this continued, I might truly be in danger. Hi. Sorry, I'm a bit busy today. One of my regular clients insists on coming in the afternoon. It's tough for him, too, working at this hour. She casually mentioned something I had never heard her talk about before. Lisa was secretly working at a day cabaret. Hey, next time it's your treat. I'm so stressed out taking care of an elderly lady. I could use some comfort. Hearing her sweet voice sent shivers down my spine. Lisa, why would you talk about such things? What's the fuss? No one's going to help you. You're running out of time too, so better keep quiet. Each of Lisa's cold words lacked consideration and pierced deeply into my heart. She no longer hid her true nature and treated me with disrespect. My heart filled with sadness and anger, I desperately hoped someone would come to help. Gradually, my surroundings blurred, and I felt my consciousness drifting away. I continued to be tormented by the sensation of being in a nightmare. Lisa's sinister smile haunted me, and I frequently suffered from deep stomach pains. How much time had passed? When I finally managed to open my eyes, I saw a white expanse in my blurred vision. For a while, my thoughts completely halted, and I simply stared blankly at the ceiling. Eventually, I remembered that I was in my own room. That's right, Lisa had opened the door, and the cold air had flowed in. I traced my memories, but I hadn't felt the cold at the time. On the contrary, my body felt slightly sweaty from warmth. Linda, can you hear me? In my dazed consciousness, I sensed something. I had longed to hear my husband Tom's voice, which now seemed to come from a corner of the room. Ryan. She has woken up. Quick, get the doctor. As Tom said this with a voice trembling with tears. It seemed to trigger a response, and the door was forcefully flung open, with rapid footsteps echoing down the hall. Where is this? 
Where am I exactly? This is the hospital, Linda. Don't worry, everything is going to be all right now. Tom said, gently squeezing my hand, trying to comfort me. What happened to me? I couldn't immediately grasp the situation, wondering how Tom, who should have been far away on business, could be here. Tom, how long have you been here? Is your work okay? Don't worry about that now. What's most important is that you get better. As he said this, Tom's face showed a mix of sadness and anger. When I returned home, I found you collapsed. I called an ambulance right away. As Tom spoke, memories began to reconnect in my mind. Indeed, I had been feeling unwell and lying down at home. As those moments were recalled, suddenly Lisa's smirking face popped into my mind. Lisa. I wanted to shout her name, but my weakened state made it hard to voice it out. I understand everything. I've been briefed by the doctors. They found grass in your stomach that normally couldn't be digested. Some of it even contained a small amount of poison. Just a little bit inside your body can be dangerous. So that's why my health never improved. At that moment, a doctor and nurse entered the room and began to check my condition thoroughly. Don't worry, you'll be fine. The doctor said, with a relieved expression. Can you tell us how this happened? Prompted by Tom, I began to recount everything that happened until I was brought to the hospital. That's everything that happened. I had no idea Lisa would do something like this. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there for you. I should apologize too. I had no idea she would go to such lengths. Saying this, both Tom and Ryan could not hide their surprise and confusion. Thank you both for coming. I feel saved. But, is your work okay? I've said it many times, but right now your health is much more important than anything else. That's right, Mom, don't worry. Then Tom quietly, yet assuredly, explained to me what had happened while I was unconscious. Tom had just finished a major task at work and tried to contact me, but when he couldn't get through after several calls, he became suspicious. He tried to contact Ryan, who was busy with work, and asked him to have Lisa check on me and inform him immediately if anything was amiss. However, Tom was not satisfied with the response. I started to feel uneasy, so I decided to rush home. When I arrived, I saw James pulling weeds in the garden. At first, I thought he was just doing some gardening and praised him for it. But then, Tom's expression changed. When I started to gather the weeds, James said, No, don't throw those away, they're grandma's food. When I heard that, I was just stunned. According to James, Lisa had instructed him to collect those weeds daily to make his grandmother get better. James was doing that. I was at a loss for words, shocked by this revelation. I instinctively yelled at James, why would you do such a reckless thing? But I understand he was just being naive. Though my anger got the better of me, I deeply regretted it later. Tom expressed regret for having scolded James, who was unaware of the harm. At that time, James cried and said, I just want to make Grandma healthy, so I'm gathering lots of these weeds. He believed that, struggling with the burden alone. Then, I rushed into the house and found you collapsed and unresponsive on the floor. Tom remembered the situation, clearly pained by the memory. It was truly a dire situation. The moment I opened the front door, an unbearable stench hit my nose, and I nearly threw up. The house was a mess with trash scattered around, and flies were buzzing in the middle of winter with no heating, the glass doors wide open, and cold air blowing through. That's where you had been living all this time. Tom looked at me incredulously. I quietly nodded and... Yes, that was the case. 
I responded. Lisa was just standing there vaguely, in an outfit and makeup so different from her usual look that I didn't recognize her at first. I couldn't just leave you unconscious like that. You seemed very weak as if you hadn't had enough nutrition or hydration. After that, Tom acted very quickly. He immediately called an ambulance and also alerted the police. The reason he called the police was because he mistook a strange woman at the scene for an intruder, not realizing it was Lisa. The police took Lisa away, and Tom had to go to the station to explain the situation. He informed Ryan about the situation and urged him to come to the scene quickly. The interrogation at the police station felt like it lasted forever because I was desperate to get back to you. After leaving the police, I headed straight to the hospital, but you were still unconscious. I'm usually an atheist, but at that moment, I found myself praying for anything that might exist because I realized I couldn't do anything without you. After a while, Ryan arrived at the hospital with James. When I explained what had happened, James said this. Mom was taken away. That's when I finally realized that woman was Lisa. After finishing his story, Tom seemed to calm himself down as he exhaled deeply. We're going to go home now. I need to feed James properly and, most importantly, we need to investigate what Lisa has been up to. This is a family matter, and we can't just leave it to the police. Investigate? What exactly are you planning to do? I was enveloped by deep anxiety. Specifically, I intend to pursue legal action against Lisa. Mixing toxic herbs into food is unmistakably a criminal act. If you file a formal complaint, the police will surely take aggressive action. But I can't do that. In panic, I tried to calm down my increasingly agitated husband. Why stop now? You're the victim here. This situation has escalated beyond something we can handle alone. We need to get the police involved and proceed with a thorough investigation. Still, we can't do that. If we do, James, he will be affected terribly. Mentioning James's name caused Tom to fall silent. Though naive, James had been directed by his mother to commit a crime. He may not understand the gravity of his actions now, but what mental anguish will he suffer when he learns the truth in the future? I sincerely wish to spare my grandson from such suffering. Please, let's not make this situation any bigger. For James's sake, I want it handled quietly. Okay, I'll respect your wishes. For James's sake, we'll keep a low profile. A week passed and my health gradually began to stabilize. At that point, I had to undergo a detailed interrogation by the police, which was quite nerve-wracking. So, you've decided not to file a complaint then? Our department views this case as definitely having criminal elements, so the investigation will continue. However, depending on the prosecutor's opinion, it could potentially result in no charges being filed. The detective had an indescribable expression, but I felt that he respected my decision. Shortly after, Lisa's parents, who live far away, showed up at my hospital room with a lawyer. I had hoped they came to apologize on Lisa's behalf, but the reality was quite different. We sincerely apologize for any trouble our daughter has caused. However, might there also be factors on your side that contributed to this situation? Lisa's mother, Sally, fixed me with a sharp gaze as she made this statement. What are you talking about? I am the victim here. I responded with a tone of protest. A victim? Reflect on your own actions. If you hadn't psychologically cornered our daughter, none of this would have happened. Are you saying I drove Lisa to this? How can you be so sure? Caught off guard by their accusations, I was left speechless. 
There is a statement from Lisa indicating that the root of the problem lies in how you treated her as your daughter-in-law. If this is true, it's hard to label Lisa simply as a villain. The lawyer explained the situation with a calm and objective demeanor. What? Why bring up such baseless accusations? My wife is undoubtedly the victim in this matter. Tom, usually calm, raised his voice in frustration at the situation. The very fact that Lisa married your son might have been the mistake. Tom is known for not working and squandering money, isn't he? That's what Lisa has told us. Sally looked at us alternately with a cold stare, her face slightly contorted. Did Lisa really say that? I have never heard such a thing. Lisa would never lie. She's been borrowing money from us every month because Tom's habits have drained your finances, leaving James without proper meals, causing him to cry. Although Sally was visibly angry, I managed to keep my composure and assess the situation calmly. If that's the case, there are ways I could address this. While I considered intervening, to avoid escalating the conflict in the hospital room, I remained silent, simply watching them leave quietly. A week had passed since the entire confrontation. Good news. The doctor said you'll be discharged soon. Tom relayed this happy news just as James began to cry suddenly. Grandma, I'm so sorry. I just wanted you to get better fast, so I did everything mom told me to gathering lots of herbs. But I didn't realize it would end up hurting you. I'm sorry. James, it's not your fault at all. You did everything out of love for me, right? So don't look so sad. Grandma is happiest when she sees your smiling face. As I comforted him, I struggled to sit up in bed and gave James a firm hug. He might not yet fully understand what he had been doing, but when he does, I will be there to support him and help heal his emotional wounds. Mom, I had that investigation done on Lisa that you asked for. Ryan spoke with a somber expression. The detective's report revealed that Lisa had been hiding significant debt from our family. It also confirmed that she had been working night jobs to pay off these debts and was suspected of having inappropriate relationships with several men. After receiving the report, I went to the law office. I'm going to divorce Lisa. That's my decision. After quietly listening to Ryan, I was unsure of what to say but ultimately felt that supporting his decision was the only option. That might indeed be the best choice. The next day, Lisa's parents visited my hospital room again, the atmosphere significantly heavier than before. I truly cannot find the words to apologize enough. We have caused you tremendous trouble. The full extent of Lisa's fabrications had come to light, leaving her no escape. She began confessing everything to her parents and her lawyer. According to her, the desire for freedom and money grew strong after she gave birth to James. Despite her responsibilities, she couldn't leave her young son alone and felt compelled to continue playing the perfect wife and ideal mother. However, as James began attending kindergarten, Lisa found herself with free time, which led to an increased interest in leisure. She indulged in buying luxury brands and spending on her own pleasures, quickly draining her finances. Initially, she managed with the living allowance from Ryan, but soon that money ran out and she started borrowing. Struggling under the weight of debt and needing to support her lifestyle, she decided to work at a cabaret during the day. There, Lisa found a different world where she was seen not as a mother, but as an attractive woman, which brought her great joy. Wanting to escape the pressures of motherhood even temporarily, Lisa increasingly engaged with various men. Ryan's prolonged business trips left the house empty, providing her with the perfect opportunity to free herself. She took advantage of this, leaving James with me while she spent her days with men and nights working in the club. 
However, when my health deteriorated, it unexpectedly altered her plans. Just when she thought she had gained freedom, the need for my care became a new burden. This burden turned into resentment towards me. If I was such a burden, she should never have offered to care for me in the first place. Wasn't it her who volunteered to look after me? Ryan, looking downcast, started to speak on her behalf. Lisa feared that failing to offer care would later tarnish her reputation as a bad wife. We deeply apologize for the pain our daughter has caused you. We regret her reckless actions and the disrespectful treatment of you based on her excuses. With those words, Sally sincerely apologized to me again. The police continued their investigation, but since I did not file a complaint, Lisa was not arrested. This entire ordeal led Ryan to finalize his decision to divorce Lisa, which was formalized through legal proceedings. In their settlement, instead of alimony or compensation, it was agreed that Tom would not involve himself in any of Lisa's substantial debts. Furthermore, the detective's investigations revealed her inappropriate relationships with multiple men, significantly increasing the alimony she had to pay. A month later, my health fully recovered, and I was finally allowed to return home. Distressed by these events, Tom promised. I vow never to let you feel lonely again. Let's stay together from now on. That sounds like a good plan, I agree. Tom retired early from his job to help more around the house and to live peacefully. How about we start a garden in the backyard for a tranquil and serene day-to-day -day life? Excitedly, James came running up. Grandma, I'm here now. We'll always be together. That's lovely, James. With this change, Ryan and James moved in, and our home became much more lively and filled with warmth. Grandma, what shall we do for fun today? Let's see, what shall we do? Let's enjoy some fun time together. As I was drawn by my grandson's lively voice, I cherished our time together and felt joy in reaffirming the bonds of our family.